Hi, Year 11. Tonight I'd like to go over the method of sections. I went over the method of joints uh, last week. Uh, this method is used when you're asked to find the force in a member that is well inside the truss. For example, if you're asked to find the force in members X, Y, and Z, as we are in this question, it would take you quite a while to use the method of joints to find these members. You'd have to do a force diagram of that joint, that joint, that joint, and that joint. And it is quite time consuming. But if you forget how to do the method of sections, uh, that's not a bad way of doing it but as i said it'll take you a lot longer so let's see how you do this the first thing you've got to do is determine the reaction um, you don't have to uh, specify which reaction you're going to use uh, unless they particularly ask it in the exam the idea is that once you've found the reactions, you take a section and you use a chain line to take the section. And so you just draw a chain line through here. I'll just get the right. So this is a chain line, which is a section line. And the theory is that when you work out the force required to have this section, we're going to, uh, which side are we taking here? Uh, the left side. Um, we're going to cut this truss with a big chainsaw or whatever, and then the truss part that's left that you've decided which side you're going to use is left there, and this other side here is taken away. It's floating down the river. And to keep this side of the truss in equilibrium, you've got to apply forces to these cut members. Now, this force here is called an external force. That's an external force. The forces inside these members are called internal forces. But once you cut these members, they become external forces. And what I used to tell my classes is that uh, you have to apply a force to these members. And I said that Batman and his bat helicopter came and and fired ropes, connected the ropes to the end of this, steel cables to the end of these broken members, and that's what holds the truss in place. Now, you don't know whether these forces will be in tension or compression on the joint. And so I generally, uh, and I don't know why I've used compression here, I generally say they're in tension. And when I put a force here, I just put a question mark next to it because I don't know whether those forces are correct. Now, with this one, I've said that they're in compression and I should normally put a question mark there. And these are the guest sensors for the cut members so that it will hold this side of the truss in equilibrium. Remember, this side here has gone floating down the river and this is out in space and it's in equilibrium and it's sitting there with these three forces applied to keep it in equilibrium. So the next thing that you do after you've found the reactions, now if I was taking this left hand side, you don't need to find this reaction on this side. So uh, I just find this reaction here because that's at 90 degrees. Remember, this 
um, reaction here, if you had inclined forces, you've got a horizontal and vertical component there. So a pin is much more difficult. But luckily, we've got all vertical forces here. So there will be a vertical force there. So this, this question is quite easy as far as the reactions are concerned. Now, we have to take moments about any part of this truss. We can take moments about anywhere. We can take moments about that point, even though this side is gone. We can take moments about that point, that point, or that point, or that point, or even this point just here, because this is in equilibrium, so it doesn't matter where you take moments about, the sum of the moments have to equal zero. But look, if we took moments about um, <clears throat> this point right here where the arrow is, we would end up with three unknowns in the equation. You'd have a moment of that force about that point, a moment of that force. I'll just uh, put this on. Let's say we're taking moments about that point there. Now, it's no good taking moments about that point because that force there has a perpendicular distance about that point, so that's going to create a moment. This force here, whoops, has a perpendicular distance about that point, so that's going to create a moment. And this force here is going to have a perpendicular distance about that point, and so that's going to create a moment. So we're going to end up with three unknowns in the equation and we don't want that we only want one unknown so the idea is to take moments about a joint that is going to eliminate two of the unknowns and so down here i have taken moments about joint a now why have i this is joint a here now, why have I taken moments about joint A? Because the moment of that force about that point is zero. The moment of that force about that point is zero. And so we can find this force here. So we say some of the moments about joint A equals zero, clockwise positive. So we've got 25 multiplied by 1.5, right? The perpendicular distance of that force and that point is 1.5. And we've got Z. Now, because these angles are 60 degrees here, where I'm just taking the length because it's an isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle. So all these sides will be equal. And so I'm, I just say that they're one, one meter or one unit. And so I've got Z times this perpendicular distance, and that perpendicular distance, if all the sides are one, will be 0.866 metres. And so we have got one unknown in the equation, and so we can find Z. Now, see the negative here? The negative indicates that this is the wrong sense. It's not in compression. It's intention. And so that negative is really important. Remember, we guess those senses. And uh, if it comes up negative, you've guessed incorrectly. And so that's the force that is in Z. Now, the next thing that we've got to do, we've got to find X and Y. And I'm going to take moments about C here because it will eliminate the moment of X and we've already got Z here and so we can just produce that on up there and get that perpendicular distance which will be 0.866 and we'll be able to find the force in Y. So we say some of the moments about C equals zero, that positive. And 
So we've got minus y times 0.866. So we've got y times 0.866, and it's going anti-clockwise, like I've guessed at it there. Then we've got 25, 25 times that perpendicular distance, about c, which is 0.5. So we've got 25 times 0.5. Um, minus, remember, this isn't going clockwise, it's going this way now, minus 43.3, .3, that's this one here, multiplied by the perpendicular distance of that force about C, which is 0.866, and that um, uh, is going anti-clockwise, so it's negative. You've got to use this sign here. Um, it's got to be tension there. And then we've got this 10 external force, this 10 kilonewton external force, and that's going to go clockwise. It is 1, so it's 10 plus 10 times 1 equals 0. And we've got a negative, another negative here. And so the negative indicates the wrong sense. And so the force in Y is 17.3 kilonewtons tension. And so Y is incorrect. So it's going in that direction, it's tension. And then to finally get, uh, I'll just remove all this. Then to finally get the last force, We take moments about joint B. Uh, here's joint B here, um, and we have to find X there. So we say some of the moments about joint B equals zero, uh, clockwise positive. Make sure you set it out this way. Make sure you put it in brackets and do it correct uh, mathematically. Um, whatever you do, don't start loading up your calculator without writing down exactly what you're doing because the examiner can't see what you're doing on your calculator. So we're taking moments about joint B here. And so we have 17.3. We've got Y there. 17.3 times 0.866. That's a perpendicular distance of Y about, right, there's the perpendicular distance of Y, about joint B. And by the way, when you're putting joint A here in your solutions, make sure you don't forget to show the examiner where joint A is on the diagram. So I've got 17.3 times 0.866 minus x times 0.866. So here is x. There's your perpendicular distance. Remember, a moment is force times perpendicular distance. It's the shortest distance from the point of rotation to the force. Plus, we've got this 10 going down here. That's going clockwise, and it's 0.5. So it's plus... 10 times 0.5, plus we've got 25, this reaction here, times 1. And that's going to go clockwise, and that equals 0. We got a positive answer, so it's a correct sense. So x is in compression. And that's how you use the method of sections. I just want to show you one more thing. Um, now, this only works when you have a horizontal top cord and a horizontal bottom cord. See this top cord? That's the top cord and that's the bottom cord. It will not work on a truss that is like this, where you've got angled top cords. It won't work. So this is the way that 
you do it. Now, let's just say that we have, we're assuming that it's in compression again. And I'm going to break this force up into vertical and horizontal components. And this vertical component will be Y sine 60. Y sine 60. Okay, so that'll be because that angle is 60 degrees there. Um, this vertical component will be Y sine 60, which is 0 0.8660. And I'd write 0 0.8660 Y there. And then all you have to do is say the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero with that direction positive because we're dealing with vectors remember and then all you have to do is say that force going up minus that force going down plus that force going up equals zero so we let's do it so we've got 25 minus 10 you don't worry about the forces on this side. It's only on the side that we're taking. Minus 10 plus 0 0.87. Y equals 0. Okay, and so then you can get Y, the uh, force in Y, using the sum of the vertical forces. And that's, you can only, yes, you can always use this method, but you can only use it when you've got a horizontal top cord and a horizontal bottom cord. Don't worry about these forces on this side here. That's gone. It's floating down the river. And these forces here have just been applied to the cut members to keep it vertical or keep it in equilibrium. So that's a method of sections. And as I said, lots of students have trouble. Most students have trouble with this. But once it's explained, um, you can see that the forces that you've got to apply to keep this side in equilibrium are actually the forces that were in in the uh, members uh, the reactive forces that are in the members when it was all together so when um, uh, x is uh, in compression don't forget that it, you've got a force i'll just uh, clean this up You can do it with horizontal forces too, some of the horizontal forces as well. Um, so this um, member is in compression, right? So that goes that way because it's we work that out. It's in compression down here. And don't forget when the truss is together, you've got another force balancing that and they're called internal reactive forces. Okay, and uh, so that's not a bad method to use if um, you have a horizontal top cord and a horizontal bottom cord. In fact, there was one in this year's HSC like that, and it made it uh, quite a bit easier. Okay, any questions on that? I hope uh, you can understand it because uh, it's really um, important that you do understand it so that uh, you can get these uh,